I would love to just do a bit of a deep dive on what you've done to rewire and just support HRV as this health metric. Like, where should someone start? What What are kind of the basics? We mentioned nutrition kind of at the the top of the show, where nutrition is playing a vital role in you know how our bodies are able to handle stress. But that you know, there's so much more to stress in our nervous system than just the fuel that we're giving our body. So we'd love to unpack that a bit. Like what are kind of the key pillars that people should be thinking about? Yeah, great question. First and foremost, and we don't need to get too much into detail on it, but sleep, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And again, ties back to evolution and really our circadian rhythm and, and supporting our circadian rhythms really impacts your HRV. So that means like the consistency of sleep and the times you sleep and the routine you do around sleep and blue light, right? We talked about blue light and Um, you know, as we evolved, we never got light after the sunset, but now we're staring at screens and doing all these things. So reduction of blue light, um, and, and, and that routine for sleep, super, super crucial is one. Then two, when it comes to food and diet, um, and I have tried them all, I believe there's not one diet that fits every single person. Right. And so it comes back to listening what your body and how your body's reacting to the food you're given. So I now even though I lean more like paleo keto, but that's just because I've been listening to my body and it's what's my body has been telling me mm-hmm. because of my epigenetics and my, you know, um, my family, like how I was raised. It just, it works well for me. So really important to not do a diet or eat because someone else is telling you or you think you want to look like that person and it's worked for them, like to actually listen to what your body's telling you. And again, that's what HRV is. Like, how much are you listening, right? So feel into how you feel after you eat a food and are you getting gas after you have this vegetable? And like, that's that's your body speaking to you. Like, it's not an accident, right? Things totally. are happening for you. Um, and then like some, some very simple ones, um, grounding, you know, grounding, uh, which people think is like a, a woo-woo thing. But like, again, going back to evolution, we evolved barefoot, on earth, right? And we are electric beings. We are a battery. So anytime we get stressed or have a thought, we're actually producing a positive charge, right? Mm. And not positive as in good, just positive as an opposite of negative on a battery. In the earth, when lightning strikes it, trillions of negative ions get put into the earth and the earth is a magnet too. So it has a negative charge. And Mm. so when you're grounded, when they say, go put your feet in the sand, it's because you're actually getting that negative charge to counteract the positive charge to get the homeostasis, right? But fast forward to today, we live in concrete jungles with shoes and padding between, right? So grounding is so simple. And if you live in a concrete jungle, like I did, there are now biohacking technologies. That's the beauty of all these technologies, right? I still do all my biohacking things, but I do them with the intention to support balance, right? Not to not sleep, you know? And so there's a company called Earthing, and there's an incredible documentary that they made um, about it. And what they've done is every house has two prongs and a ground outlet. That Mm -hmm. ground outlet is just meant to close the circuit in your house and it's actually connected to the ground outside. And so all their material has you plug into that ground and it's like you are outside. So I I work and stand on an earthing mat. I sleep on an earthing mat. I have an earthing pillow. And then I walk around with earth runners or grounded shoes. So I'm grounded like 90% of the time, which is how my body hundreds of thousands of years ago evolved grounding, Mm. right? Yeah. What's cool is... It sounds like in the context of the modern world, you're doing these things that allow you to pull kind of these natural forces into the modern world, whether it's a grounding mat or maybe like a red light that allows you to mitigate some of these things to almost like simulate like you're in nature and nothing beats nature, obviously. But if you are going to be living in a city, if you are going to be exposed to some of these things, just knowing that a grounding mat and a red light and Eating the right blocking thing. glasses, yeah. eating the right things. There's so many little things like that. And it's so funny you said it. You're right. Nothing beats nature. And we are choosing to live these incredible, active, overstimulating lifestyles that have a lot of joy and fun. Like it's a human experience. We're right. here, I'm here for it all, right? Yeah. And so there are technologies out there that can support getting you back to as if you were in nature. And some of them can be cheap. And also some can be, I mean, I have a hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber in my home, right? Mm-hmm. I have a red light sauna. I have cold. So I have all the things. I love all the things when I'm in California and in it. And I traveled um, for three months last year, didn't do any of that, and had an HRV at times higher than my normal baseline without doing those things, right? Mm. So, But when I'm home, 
those things support me because I'm putting those other perceived stresses on. Mm. And it gets back to, to, to the last thing I'll say in terms of like the checklist is really just um, intentionally, at least at some point in the day or in the middle of the day, getting your body into a parasympathetic state, right? Like mm. the biggest, I think the biggest needle that moved my HRV and why how I was able to get mine so high is I consciously put myself in arguably one of the most stressful businesses you can be in, the beverage business, right? Yeah. And for the last five years, being in that stressful business, raising capital from over 180 investors, trying to keep this thing alive, I would consciously in the middle of the day, pause to do a parasympathetic reset. And for me, I could wake up in the morning, go sit on my altar and meditate. That was fine. But I couldn't do it in the middle of the day when the calls and everything were happening. Right. And so I'd use technologies. And actually that, that new calm, the binaural beat technology was the foundation of it because binaural beats is the phenomena of essentially entrapping your brain into a desired state through mm. frequency. And I'd stack it with a PMF mat, pulsed electromagnetic fields, with a hydrogen inhalation machine in a thermal blanket. So it's called, some of my friends call it the Salim experience, Ali actually who connected <laughs> us. And it's a 20 minute, non-sleep deep rest nscr as huberman you know has, has made like that no matter what i'm doing like totally stops the mind and gets me in a parasympathetic state and then i'd go back and do all my calls so essentially wow. one two three o'clock i'd go from a beta sympathetic state i'd do 20 minutes to dip and then go back out and that exercise is what is it doing it's increasing the malleability and resilience of my heart, right? Mm. Because again, we didn't evolve staying for eight, 10, 12, 12 hours in this high beta sympathetic state. Mm. So the biggest thing is being conscious and dropping into that state, whether it's through a technology or even just one minute between a call breathing, right? Or meditating or jumping in a cold plunge or a sauna, something you can do in the middle of the day to fluctuate that nervous system the best thing you can do for your nervous system. Yeah, just something that can pull you out of that hyper overstimulated state in the middle of it. Yep. Like something that can just get you back to that like calm, relaxed state 